this is Harry Jobs for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're here in Ironbridge. I'm glad to be joined by Jay Swingler in your own gym. This is fantastic here. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it used to be an antique store. We turned into the, a gym. Yeah, as you can see, it's like got a bit of a rustic look on the walls over there and that. Yeah. So I spoke to you before this interview. You're taking boxing pretty seriously. This, you have kids' classes here. This is your own setup. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so like we've got... Um, uh, Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays right now at 7 till like half 8, 9 o'clock we'll do like a group session, we've got kids sessions here the, it's, it's a mixture to be honest there's adults, kids and then I'll join in with that just to show my support down the gym just like doing pads with the kids and the, and the, and the older ones as well all, all of us training together, keeping the morale up you know what I mean You are main event, October 15th it's a matter of weeks away um, are the nerves starting to come in with that fight? Um, nerves, not so much. I think maybe I'll probably get adrenaline, uh, an adrenaline rush, like probably the day or two before. But as of right now, like I'm just very, very excited and eager to get in there. I wish it was tomorrow. I actually wish it was tomorrow, man. I'm literally, I'm like trying to sleep at night and I'm just like there, like doing head movements on my pillow and my girlfriend's like laying next to me. We're like, you keep still. And I'm like, I can't, I'm, I, I just, I need it now. So I'm so excited. This isn't your first fight. Um, we spoke just before this interview in terms of how your mindset has changed. Just take me back, though, to 2018 against Gibb. Again, wasn't um, the ideal outcome for you. Um, you've mentioned in previous interviews and on why that is. A lot of that was to do with nerves. But take me back to your recollection of that fight, mate. Oh, man. It honestly is a little bit of a blur. But what I can remember of it is, well, one, I was just unprepared. Prepared. I wasn't ready for... Gibbs cardio at all I did I, I ran twice it, <laughs> leading up to that fight it was absolutely horrible I just wasn't taking it serious I don't think I saw a future in it like I do now um and yeah I it was I was nervous I wasn't myself on the night I just felt like I came out and it was his show rather than mine but this fight is my fucking show this is my show coming in terms of the nerves, one of the things you said which made me uh, chuckle a little bit was throwing a jab was like learning, was it French for the first time at, at a secondary school? Is that what I said? That's what you said in one of your videos. Yeah, you don't, is that, do you still stand by that? Yeah, I actually do. That, like, uh, it was just a, a bizarre experience to me learning to box for that fight. And it, not only that, in front of that many people, like it is uh, just a heavy, heavy weight, I guess, just like coming out to that many people. Hats off to any of the people coming into this whole YouTube stuff for the first time, because like we were saying, just like swarms coming out to that must have been horrible, man. Like so much pressure, little notice, you know, hats off to the guy, man. <laughs> My recollection is poor. It was German, not French. It's probably why you can't remember. But um, yeah, how, how do you, in terms of what you learned from that fight, I mean, everyone did say you showed a lot of heart. Perhaps you, you start a little bit too slowly. But in terms of that fight, how much um, education has that given you for, for this one coming up, mate? More than anything, I feel like I'll just be more prepared mentally to kind of and, and relaxing and staying focused and, you know, walking into that huge crowd I don't think is going to seem as intimidating this time um, I've experienced a lot more since then I was 23 or 24 then I'm 27 now I've matured a lot in some senses um, so yeah I feel like more mentally I'm, I'm mentally stronger I feel more confident in who I am in this fight on top of just the, my, my boxing abilities just come on leaps and bounds as well Talk to me about your training. You went, to, um, you spoke to me just before the interview. How much you are doing? I mean, you posting images and how good you're looking. Um, how seriously are you taking this fight? Well, I'm living and breathing it. Um, I don't have a, I don't get a day off. I get one, well, I get one day off a week, which is my Saturday or my Sunday. I'm living and breathing this like I was living and breathing YouTube when we were growing the channel originally. Like it has become a full time job essentially, training three a day. I don't think it gets any harder than that, to be honest. This is the lightest that you've weighed. You know, you're weighing, you know, 76 kg. Um, you know, talk about that, how much that's impacted on your body. Yeah, well, I'm a lot faster now, that's for sure. When I first started, I could 100% tell I had the weight on me. I think I started boxing, um, started it back up again about a year and a half ago when I was 88 or 89 kg, had a lot of body fat and I ha uh, had a lot of like weight and I was very slow and sluggish with my movement. I feel like I'm a lot snappier and a lot faster now. Yeah. Talk to me about 
Char is it? I can't remember. Char Churdly um, or Churdly Daddy or whatever he, whatever he likes to be called. Daddy. Uh, just talk to me about it. for the people that don't know about who he is. You know what do you know about Churdly? Well, I know he's um, a great content creator, but that's as far as it kind of goes. Um, he seems like he's trying to play the the mind games, like. He's not taking it serious on the internet, but I think he is. I think, why would you commit to this? Why would you take the fight if you're not willing to give it your everything? Do you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a big payday, I guess, for him. So that's a reason why he'd take the fight. But I just really hope he's coming to bring a war. I really don't want it to end in one round. You finally got your, your Zoom chat with him because he missed the Zoom face-off, didn't he? Uh, the, the one that was beforehand, but you got... Um, a co-interview um, with Charlie yesterday. What, what, what did you take from that last night? I tell you what, I watched it last night. I was absolutely in stitches. It was so good. Like it was such a different. I feel like it's a very different take on like YouTube boxing conferences because with him, he's such a he's such a unique, funny character. I can't go in there and beef the guy. There's not. We've got no history of beef, so that would be pointless, and I'd look like an idiot. So. I just kind of let him take the show. I'm I'm there to box. At, I'm here to box at the end of the day. Um, I know people are expecting probably a little bit more for me. I am conscious of that. I'm conscious of people thinking this ain't the J that like we all know and love from TGF. But at the end of the day, like we're fighting and this is the fight game. No head guards. You can die in that ring. So this isn't a joke to me. And I've just been taking everything on board that my coach has been giving me. And you know I am taking it serious. He said it's not real boxing, it's YouTube boxing. When he said that, you instantly replied and went, no, this is real boxing. I'm glad you picked up on that because when I watched it back, that is something I picked up on as well. I was very instant with it. It was like a... I guess, it was intuitive. It was just straight away. Yeah, because we, we're not training in, in here. Like, the, the, the YouTube's even involved in any of this. It doesn't matter what we do for a living. It doesn't matter if you're a plumber, a YouTuber, an electrician. I don't know. You work at, behind a desk. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, when you get in that ring, your job and your background goes out the window. And I think this is what people fail to realize. Like, it doesn't matter. When you're in that ring, you are a boxer and that's it. What did you make of it when you found out you were main event um, in Sheffield, yeah, the Utility Arena? When did, what did you? What was your instant reaction when you found out you were main event of this card? Yeah, so originally um, it was Raman versus is it um, Bivol? Is that was that was that the original card? Um, and th they were the main event, and then I was like the the co-main event. It was like two main cards essentially, and then that got changed. So Raman and um, the guy he was fighting kind of got moved. So then I was the main event with Churdley's. Don't get me wrong, I understand why we can pull off a main event because of like the following that TGF has as such a loyal following. But I'm going to say it now, I genuinely be believe that people are going to be as interested, if not a little bit more interested in Slim and Ryan Taylor, um, in my humble opinion, because there's genuine beef there. And there's a lot of the UK audience that have no clue who my opponent is. But I guess my name and TGF has carried me to be that main card, do you know what I mean? Give us a little bit of an insight with the beef between Slim and, and Ryan Taylor. What, what do you know about that one? I don't know too much. I, I did keep up with I did keep up with like the YouTube videos that they were both posting, but you know, like this is this is YouTube man and what they're doing is is, is great entertainment, but they personally hate each other. It's genuine, they hate each other. Um I think it's going to be a very, very interesting fight. Ryan Taylor is actually from the same area as me. And I know us West Midland boys have a lot of grit. Um, and I think that's what carried me through my Gibb fight. So I think Slim is, um, is, going to be, is going to come out as a good boxer. But I think Ryan Taylor is going to be the one with a lot of heart on the night. One thing that Charlie said yesterday that just absolutely got me in stitches was the fact that he's been training 15 years for this fight. What did she make of that? Don't do this to me, man. I, I, I have a bruised rib at the moment from sparring. And when, when I... Was that from was what, what he said or from the box and the sparring? <laughs> well, I've been sparring and I got hit with a body shot the other day and I got a little bit of a bruised rib, so... When he said that, right, when Fred said he was three years old when Chetley started training, I broke down my... I was in so much pain, bro, honestly. Even the alien was laughing. Yeah. 
Nathan, good old Nathan. He couldn't be here today. He broke down on the way here, yeah, so. Yeah, I was he very. Dri- he drives now. He drives. Yeah, I was very. Uh, yeah, well, after the last, the last video you put out, yeah, I'm well, grateful for that one. Um, but yeah, in terms of Churnley, no one really knows much about him. Again, I am reading up as much as I can about him, but the thing that I found out. It's just so, so amusing. Yeah, I just, yeah. this, this is going to be entertainment. What are you expecting from fight week? Um, I think Charlie's is going to carry the press conference because right now I'm not in the zone to be entertaining like that. I'm in the zone to fight. So um, I think the entertainment that I'm going to supply is going to be fight night and Charlie's will probably carry the better energy fight week. I'm too zoned in to be fucking about now. Honestly, that's just how it is, man. Jeff said this is a mismatch. I know you've got no beef, but what did you make of that comment? So I was actually confused when he said that. Did, was he saying it's a mismatch because it's actually pretty... It, it's like, who's the mismatch, Who's the better fighter? Is Churdley the better fighter or am I the better fighter? Didn't get what he was trying to get out there. But I'm guessing he was trying to say that Churdley's is better than me. And yeah, it, it ain't... Jeff, come on, man. It ain't happening. One of the things that come out in the press conference as well, it was meant to be in Miami. Again, that was something which you were happy that it's not in Miami, but this 30-hour flight, are you upgrading his uh, economy ticket? I messaged him on Instagram. He completely ignored me, but replied to my story instead. Um, this is Churdley's, by the way. I, I actually messaged him and I was like, I'll upgrade your flights if you haven't got business, because that is actually fucked. I never knew that. 30 hours. 30, I, he's chatting shit. If that's real, if that's real, I'll upgrade him. But he's probably playing games. He'll probably be here in like 12 hours. It'll be, it's like a, he'll have a direct flight first class. He'll have champagne on the way over our watch. You said if you win, you become a top, in the top five of YouTube boxers. I mean, I've got two questions in this, but arguably, how can you call yourself a top five when we don't really know who he is? Exactly. So... I, what did you mean by that? So I, I, I meant... I won't be a top five fighter just yet, but I will be. And I don't think it's going to come off this fight. But I think people are going to look at this fight when I win um, by knockout. It's going to be, my name's going to be thrown into the mix of the people, like your Salt Pappies, your, your Gib, your KSI, your Slim, um, Jake Paul. Um, it's going to be hard to take um, a lot from that fight because I don't think Charlie's is going to put up much of a fight. But I think in one or two fights... I think I'll be up there and I think people will be calling me out because they know it'll be a money fight. Accept yourself because you will put yourself as a, the number one, I, I imagine. Mm-hmm. But what is your top five YouTube boxers at this point in time? So I think mentality overrides everything and I think JJ is the strongest mentally in the game right now and I think that helps him big time and as well he's come on leaps and bounds like I say what did you make of his last fight because there was a lot of arguments in terms of okay there's two fights in one night but again it was you know three rounds two minutes you know, amateur fights and there was a lot of break you know it was a long break between the two and arguably a lot of um, criticism to do with the boxer who you know arguably was you know pretty much on the same level of swarms in those fights. Yeah, so it was like, like JJ said, I think he was getting rid of the ring rust. He just needed to warm it back up. And at the end of the day, this is business. He was introducing Misfits 1. I think it was smart for him to do as a publicity stunt at the end of the day. But um, going back to your question, I think KSI, Gib, I think KSI, top. Jake Paul second. Why say Jake Paul second? Just as you, know, you ex- explained, obviously, KSI, why Jake Paul? I think Jake Paul has actually got a vulnerable soul, you know. As much as the bravado that he's got, I think you could break Jake Paul down mentally. I can see a lot of insecurity in that guy that JJ doesn't, either he doesn't have or no one knows he has because he's fucking bravado and his confidence is so through the roof. I think that would completely demolish Jake Paul. And I think Jake Paul, when he beat Gib, I think that's something Jake Paul had over Gib. He had the heart over Gib. But I think JJ would beat him easy. Well, carry on. Number three. Number three. Um, oh man, I'm gonna say me. Number three. One second. <laughs> we're just we're just doing an interview, mate. Sorry. That's the worst part you've ever seen. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Is that yours? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Leave me alone. <laughs> We're keeping this, and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, can, he can try and box, but he can't park his, his BMW. He's come to train with his fucking spirit level. 
Back to the question number three. So you said, um, yeah, number three. Who was number three? I think it's Jake. I think it's KSI, Jake Paul, Gib, and me as of right now. Yeah. Um, that's is that four, yeah? yeah. And I think number five. 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 Um, salt Pappy. I was about to say salt Pappy uh, again. Um, <laughs> just you know, absolutely blitz his opponent again. It was. It's hard to to compare or to an analyse someone's performance when it's a bit of a mismatch. But again, yeah, Salt Pappy was terrific in that fight. Yeah, he was. Um, like you just said, the opponent wasn't like the best um, display for him, but he, he banged him, was it in like 30 seconds, 20 seconds or something, like insane. And you could tell Salt Pappy's a natural boxer, so you can tell he's been fighting for some time. I watch his YouTube videos, actually. I'm subscribed to him. When he uploads, I'm always watching his videos and his vlogs. I actually really, I like the, he's very likeable, isn't he? Yeah, he's a very likeable man. Um, going back to YouTube boxing and the comparison with boxing, yeah, how do you think, because, you know, the Jake Paul, no, no, the, the KSI, Tommy, and, and um, I can't remember his name, Joe Willow uh, fights a long time ago now. That was sort of one of the first ones. So how much has YouTube boxing come on as a, as a sport? Yeah, I think people are taking it more serious now. Like, the, the, actual, the actual boxers and the people who are involved in it as well, I think a lot more eyes are looking at it now. And they're seeing the money in it as well. And I think this is where, okay, like, boxers are seeing that, this boxing stuff can outweigh their their YouTube careers, their clothing brands that they run, like their podcasts, whatever people have going on. Box, the boxing is outweighing it now because of the money in it. And I think this is why we're having so many YouTubers come to it, man. And it's just going to keep growing. I think it's just going to keep going and going. What do you make of the criticism from the from the fight shows? So those um, boxing fans that again are completely against the YouTube um, culture. So yeah, what's your argument to them in terms of why YouTube boxing is a, a good sport? Um, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on it. To be fair, I do see like you do see the odd person like hating on it every now and then. But like for me, I'm just so focused and I and I really believe in everything that everybody's doing in the YouTube scene that like. Those comments and the things that the people on the outside say doesn't ever really... I don't ever actually see it anymore because I've kind of just, like, blocked it out, you know what I mean? I believe in it. I believe in it, and that's as far as it goes. I think it's going to do well. In terms of you, we spoke just before the interview again. Um, if you win um, this fight on the 15th of October, you want to take boxing. Probably, well, again, you're taking it seriously, but um, away from the YouTuber side, and now we'll just move more into just boxing yeah I, I would love to 100% I think um, going from like the YouTube I'm definitely going to stay in the YouTube stuff for a while because I think it's just a great way to build the platform and to build your name up as a boxer and I think it's good practice to be stepping into an actual pro world as well um, but I am 100% going to be committing to this sport over the next few years what did you make of um, well before Ratman Jr um, was postponed with, with Jake Paul before that um WBC were going to give Jake Paul ranking if he beat Ratman Jr., the, you know, the first official boxer um, that he's, he would have ever fought. What was your initial reaction to that one, mate? Um, Ratman Jr. would have beat him. Like, his dad was a fighter. He, he's just a fighter in his blood. I think he would have dominated Jake Paul. Did you see the um, footage as well? Like, the, the, the stuff that Jake Paul... The sparring put? stuff. Yeah, but, like, Jake Paul only put out this, the footage of, like, where... Rockman couldn't even use his left hand or he couldn't jab or something. Yeah, like, I think in a real fight, Jake would have got battered, and I think that's why the fight didn't happen. I think Jake Paul's investors saw it as a bad business move, and they were like, no, fuck this. We need to keep this guy going a little bit longer. There's more money to make out of him. So I think that's why they didn't go ahead. Well, on the 29th, though, you've got to give him some praise. He's going against a, U uh, no, a UFC absolute legend in Anderson Silva mm -hmm. in, in Phoenix in, in the US. You know, it's just a... a Again, it's, it's hard to give Jake Paul any stick in that. We understand that Anderson Silva's you know, a, a veteran coming to the end of his time, maybe in, in, in sort of the UFC boxing career. But again, uh, it's just a great, it's just a, a great event, isn't it, really? Yeah, 100%. I'm actually really excited. If any YouTube boxing event that happens, I'm there. I'm there to watch. I love it. If I don't watch it on night because it's at like 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm already asleep, I'll watch it the next day on Twitter or YouTube or I'll log into the zone and watch it or whatever. But um, I think Jake Paul will be beat Silva. Um, really? I actually think so. Um, Why do you say that? I, I don't know. There's something, I think there's something mad about Jake Paul's team and who they pick. 
and who they pick him to fight. There's too much money on the line and too much money in Jake Paul's name and the people around him for him to be going into a fight that he knows he's going to lose. I'm not saying anything's set up. I'm just saying Anderson Silva's how old now? He's retired. And he's a UFC fighter. He's a madman, though. That's the thing. So that it could go either way. It could go either way. I could be wrong. But I feel like Jake Paul could have him. If you were in that fight, first of all, who would you pick as your sparring partners? And then second of all, how would you approach that fight? So, repeat that again. So, in, in the first question was, to prepare for that fight with Anderson Silva, who would you pick as your sparring partner? Oh, my God. That could be anyone. Yeah. Um... Could be UFC, could be boxing. I mean, how do you... Um, well, Anderson Silva's a ridiculous striker, isn't he? I don't know, to be honest. I'd have no idea who I'd pick. Too many names. <laughs> but then, second of all, how would you approach that fight in the fight with Anderson Silva? How would you approach it? Would you just you know, be on the front foot or you know, what would you do? Um, Anderson Silva's timing's immaculate, so I feel like he, Jake's going to have to move a lot. I feel like Jake's going to have to be in and out. Um, he's going to have to be in and out using the jab, and he's going to have to time things perfectly. Mm -hmm. But I think Anderson Silva's age is gonna is gonna have slowed him only a little bit. I feel I still think Silva's gonna be fucking quick yeah. and a ridiculous striker. But I feel like Jake Paul could do him on his speed. Another crossover um, is Deji um, just come out of nowhere here, and I just can't believe it's happening. But it is happening. Uh, another crossover fight, which was just absolutely bizarre, is the fact that Deji's fighting one of pro probably could be argued one of the greatest boxers. To ever existed, well, he is one of the greatest boxers ever, ever existed. Whether he's number one, I don't know. But Floyd Mayweather versus Deji, um, again, just talk to me about that. What do you want me to say? I don't know. Where, what, where? Where'd you we, start? With that? Yeah, exactly. Like, what are we living in right now? This is fucking insane. Comedy shorts gamer. The guy who wore tank cap. Yeah, in his mom's living room, reacting to horror games, is fighting the world's greatest boxer. Like, when you say that to yourself, it's just bizarre. But this is why I'm saying this boxing stuff can just keep going and going. Like, if that can happen, what else can happen? What are you talking about you? Where can you go? <sighs> Man. <laughs> Yo, I, I've seen a lot of people comparing me the way I look recently to Conor McGregor, you know. It's the, it's the short hair and the beard, man. I'm you got an impression for me? Yeah, I might have to. I might have to <laughs> get in the ring of Conor McGregor one day, you know. I actually had a dream it happened. I actually had a dream it happened. So you're manifesting to maybe fight, to am, fight maybe, Conor McGregor? Maybe I am. I would fucking love to share the ring with that guy. He would absolutely dominate me verbally. But maybe at the point it happened, that fight, maybe I could stand a chance. He's not a boxer, is he? So Let's go back to that Deji Mayweather fight. Um, again, it's how does that one transpire, mate? How, how does that one go on? Uh, will you be going or, or, you know? Oh, man, it's in Dubai, isn't it? And it's in, is it in November? Yeah, so it's after my fight. So I'm actually able to, you know, travel and do things other than being glued to this gym. I'll probably go to that, you know, that sounds really fun. Um, all Deji needs to do is last. He's just, yeah, and I would love to see him at least just land a really clean punch on Mayweather. If he's done that, he's won it for the UK, Annie. Yeah. Like, it's an exhibition. There's no winner or loser unless it's a knockout. I saw Floyd Mayweather knock out the, the Japanese guy recently. I don't think he'll do that to Deji. I think Deji's got a big, I think he's got a granite chin, you know. Why is Mayweather doing these type of fights, though? It's, again, why did. Where does that come from? Why Deji? You know, why not KSI, for example? Well, I guess it's different weights, isn't it? But just, it's just absolutely bizarre, just out of nowhere. Yeah, I've thought about this a lot, you know. I've thought about, like, why Deji and why not KSI or why not, I don't know, like, someone with a... But Deji, right now, he's on this, like, redemption mission, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And I feel like Mayweather's business team are smart enough to see that Deji's got a big support around him right now in the UK. And I feel like the whole of the UK is going to root for Deji. Whereas, if, whereas KSI... Who knows, that could have been a conversation, but I feel like it's not the right time for KSI to take a fight like that yet. If, let's, let's say, a hypothetical situation, Mayweather asked JJ, I think JJ would have said no, just because JJ's on a path right now, he wants to keep a clean slate and he wants it to go smooth. But Deji, I think Mayweather's smart for picking Deji. He's going to have the whole of the UK watching that night, so it's just money in it. Yeah, and I, but again, I, I imagine if he wins. <laughs> 
I know, it's, yeah, yeah, I know. Everyone says, don't they? They're like, oh, imagine if he wins. Then everyone looks at each other and like, oh, that's not going to happen, is it? But then it's like anything can happen in boxing, can't it? So, um, Leading on to brother, and you, you, you did mention the, the uh, Jake Paul um, and KSI. How big is that fight? Maybe, you know, Wembley Stadium, uh, yeah, that would sell out. How big is that fight? That uh, is absolutely huge. It would just do, I think it would do similar numbers to like what... Um, in terms of the Wem like if they did it at Wembley Stadium, it'd sell out like Tyson Fury and, and AJ kind of numbers or or what um, was it Dillian White that um, Tyson Fury fought last? Yeah. They filled Wembley Stadium. It's like eighty plus thousand. I think they could do that. No problem. I would love to be on that card as well. <laughs> be sick. Um, just finishing up then. Um, if you could go straight to the camera, I know there's no beef, but you could give Churley a message that you want to give him before um, fight week. Then this is your time. To do it, mate. Yo, Churdlis, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to tattoo I love Jay on the back of your leg, come weigh in or press conference, bro. I want to make sure the tattoo gun has got like rust on it and stuff. So your leg gets bare infected. Come fight night, you'll be fighting on one foot. Love you. Thanks all to Fox's social, <laughs> mate. We'll catch up. No problem, bro. Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs>